Good afternoon. Um, since we are running short of time, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I represent uh, SunSource Energy. Uh, we are a solar project developer and an EPC company. Uh, we are about eight years old, uh, have built about uh, 120 uh, projects, uh, solar projects, uh, largely rooftop projects for uh, commercial and industrial clients all over India, across 22 states, um, and also abroad. So we have built about 50 megawatts of projects in India and uh, about 50 megawatts of projects outside India. So that's a brief introduction to the company. We are about 120 strong, um, and uh, that is just the, the strength of the company itself. Um, uh, in addition, we have, about, uh, we have a whole network of uh, partners and uh, subcontractors all over the country that we work with on a repeated basis. So that gives you a sense of, um, uh, of uh, uh, where we are at the moment. Where we have come from is starting from zero. About eight years ago, we started from uh, uh, just myself uh, and my co-founder, and we have gotten to this stage. So you can imagine that uh, in terms of human resources, getting to this particular point in the company's uh, growth uh, has been challenging, and uh, the biggest challenge out of, that, of all the challenges that you face as an entrepreneur and as a, as a company at any size, it doesn't matter what size the company is, uh, the biggest challenge that you face is the challenge of human resources. So this um, uh, topic of uh, human capacity building uh, in the renewable energy industry is something very close uh, uh, to, to, to my heart. Uh, it's, a, it's an issue, a problem, an opportunity that uh, we deal with uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, just to give you a sense of the split of the company, in, in, in our company there are uh, you know, various departments that you would imagine uh, are there in a company. Uh, we have uh, an engineering department, which is kind of the core of the company. We, have, uh, we do engineering for um, uh, solar projects across the world, so we have a larger engineering team that, uh, than most companies. We have about 30 people in the engineering team who do design engineering. In addition to the design engineering team, we have a, a site operations team, which also consists largely of engineers, uh, project operations uh, and project coordination, which also consists largely of engineers. And then we have uh, technicians and training people and, of course, the support functions such as business development, accounting. Business development is also mostly engineers. So, uh, you know, the, the need for uh, uh, people with the right skill set, the, people for, uh, the need for people who have a set of capabilities that we are looking for at any given point in time is, is paramount. And we have to find new people all the time. Um, uh, partly because of the growth of the company and partly because, uh, because uh, from time to time people leave. We have been luckier than most companies uh, in terms of our retention ratios, but uh, uh, you always need to replace people who leave as well. So uh, the way I want to cover the topic that we are discussing today is from a very uh, microeconomic level, and we'll talk a little bit about the big numbers. Um, and I want to leave it at the challenges. I want to leave it at the demand side, which is what I represent uh, here on this, uh, uh, on, on this um, uh, stage. So the demand side is the people who need, the, is, the, is the entities, the companies, the organizations that need the people who demand the skills and the capabilities which are required by the market. And the supply side is also represented here. Dr. Saxena, uh, Mr. Babu, uh, uh, these are people who are working on the supply side from the government side. So uh, uh, let's talk about the demand side. The problem uh, or the issues that we face as an employer, um, uh, there is a technical gap in terms of the type of skills and capabilities that people emerge with from their institutes and colleges. Uh, the degrees that they bring in uh, actually don't make them very employable. So you know, what we found in the course of interviewing people over and over again and shortlisting people is, uh, 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 talking about own, our own experiences that uh, 8 out of 10 engineers that we speak to or that we come across are actually not qualified to be called engineers. Uh, some of them are qualified to be uh, engineers but they're all, uh, they're all looking to get into an industry in which they don't fit. And the reason they don't fit is either they don't have the basic knowledge of engineering which is required, I mean uh, that kind of reflects uh, on the, 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 the quality of, of education that we have, or people, um, uh, uh, sometimes people didn't work hard on their, uh, on their degrees, hard enough on their degrees, put in a basic amount of work. 
But many times it's a question of um, uh, them not learning skills that would be required in a job environment. They don't know that the basic tools, for example, which are used in the solar industry, such as um, either 2D or 3D design, which is something that, frankly, I believe that in today's day and age, every engineer needs to know. As long as you're not computer science or one of these, uh, uh, you're not working with data and programming and so forth. If you're a, an electrical or a mechanical engineer, uh, uh, you need to know some degree of CAD or 2D, or 2D and 3D design. Similarly, um, people who are emerging with business school uh, degrees, they need to do certain types of analysis. They need to know Excel. They need to know uh, PowerPoint. And when people come in with, without these types of basic skills, it becomes hard to, it, it becomes a waste of time. You have to basically literally look through a, um, a haystack. You work with recruiters, even recruiters try their best, but even uh, working with recruiters has its own limitations and constraints. So, you know, uh, uh, in terms of problems, one of the major gaps that we face in terms of the, uh, the skill level uh, of the incoming set of people is this lack of basic capability, especially among freshers and people who are two, three, four years out of college. Then uh, there's a bigger problem. There's a bigger problem, especially among the younger set of uh, people who are coming out, which is a, a set of uh, sort of an attitude issue, which is an attitude issue. The attitude issue ends up being the, a bigger problem. Uh, there isn't the, the attitudes which, uh, uh, which we face. Uh, by the way, you know, I'm f focusing on the negatives. I get to work with a very, very promising set of people as well. And that's why the company has been able to accomplish all that it has been able to, uh, promising, hardworking, and so forth. But I'm, we're talking about the, the, the overall environment f we face here. And the overall environment in terms of getting people on board, in terms of finding people, is quite heartbreaking. So uh, we were talking about the attitude issues that we, we face among people. Uh, the biggest thing is that most people have never ever, um, uh, most people who interview for jobs nev have never ever actually um, understood the importance of a job. So there are all kinds of unprofessional things that happen, which actually it is a responsibility of the educational institutions they went to. It's nobody else's responsibility. Or if they try to upskill themselves, whoever they try to upskill themselves should leave them with, with these basic messages that they should not cancel interviews, they should not schedule interviews and not show up for interviews. I'm not sure if you guys have faced these types of uh, problems, but these things happen. Uh, and then uh, when you accept a job, you should not lie on your resume, you should be able to put up, you only talk about stuff that you've actually done, you talk about stuff that you can prove with paperwork, at least in terms of degrees and certifications. Uh, you, uh, and I see a number of young people sitting at the back, so this is Hopefully this is a message you will take to heart and, and take it back with you. Um, you uh, only um, uh, say stuff that you can back up in terms of your knowledge. If you go to, if you've been to a particular site in a particular job, you can't say that you were actually running that, uh, you were the project manager at that particular site. So basic things like, uh, uh, like that, basic hygiene stuff like that. This is an attitude problem. And one of the biggest problems that we have seen is when people join, they leave. I mean, they, they sometimes leave a day after uh, uh, they join, saying, you know, I was selected for a site engineer. I interviewed to be a site engineer, but I don't like working on sites. This is also ty the type of stuff that we face. So this is, uh, so th these attitude corrections which are required, they are required. And, and younger people who, I mean, I see my colleague in the industry, Ritu, uh, nodding her head, and, you know, uh, people in the industry face this all the time. And so this is something that, uh, to a professional doing uh, a very basic thing of, you know, uh, 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 keeping your promises, you know, doing things that you commit to do. That should be, that should trouble you. If you're not able to do that, that should really, really, really trouble you. And that attitude correction, I'm not sure if any amount of upskilling is going to help with that, that kind of attitude correction. But I have to say that, you know, obviously, again, Maybe 20 or 30 percent of the people, as they grow more senior in their careers, you know, there are people who are seven years old with my company. There are people who are six years old with my company. People learn, and then, as they learn, they become more and more responsible, and they get more responsibility, and then they become even more responsible. So that's the cycle. That's the virtuous cycle that we would like to start, and we have been able to, you know, I personally consider myself fortunate to have been part of that cycle for many, many professionals, and that's one of the most rewarding aspects of what I do as a CEO of SunSource Energy. So 
leaving it there with the challenges, you know, uh, at a macro level, uh, you know, uh, people are projecting uh, something like uh, by 2022, uh, this sector, solar in specifically, is going to employ something like 1.1 million uh, people, about almost 70-80% uh, of these people would be employed in, on construction, design, construction, and impl implementation type jobs, and the rest would be in support jobs such as business development, legal, uh, operation and maintenance, and so forth. So it, these are very, very large numbers, and you know the government is aware of it. The you know I'm I'm part of the uh, 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 training team for, uh, in the in the for the for the SBI team that we were talking about. Mr. Mr. Babu was talking about. So you know I myself have trained bankers in terms of the 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 technical aspects of. Uh, uh, solar systems and solar rooftop systems, but uh, so the so the government is aware of it and is working on it. But this degree of this this degree basic degree of professionalism which is expected, this basic sense of you have to keep your promises, I'm not sure what to do about it. No, we try to uh, take a 